So the building I'm going to show in this photograph is totally gone. Just the waste ground now. So that's where we're going up there. Beautiful windows. similar sort of thing, you know, you see stuff around and uh, more and more it looked like film and it turned out it was film. <laughs> so um, rather than again emulate it, emulate it, I decided I wanted to uh, shoot it. But it's been a consuming, overwhelming kind of like thing. I've, I've, I've not just like started to shoot film, I've done everything, I'm, 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 I'm buying cameras and I'm like encompassing yeah. the whole thing because it's just I, I'm even like start doing like salt printing and ceramic type printing so it's it's become a, a life force yeah. now it's just taking it's me good. somewhere which is really, really good. good I always went back to the silk print which is what we're all going to be doing making today and there, there are printing methods that are of perhaps a higher archival standard, although it's pretty hard to be. Like platinum printing, for example, is what like magnum photo agents prefer their prints to be made. <coughs> I guess the point I'm trying to make is that um, nothing, nothing beats a silver print for me. Yeah. I, I've done lots of other things and loads of fun, but when it comes to like, I mean, we're, we're all photographers, and it sounds like we all want to make prints. So the primary concern for me was just making a good print of, of, of because we were, it's an image that we want to show people. You want to render it in the best way you can. So I make silver prints. So silver prints have always been the one for me. Um, so today, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to load film into a Patson tank. That's what you guys are going to do today. Um, so I've got dummy rolls, we can play around for as long as you like, nice and easy, ease ourselves into what is potentially the only stressful part of the day. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so we'll get our film loaded. Um, what will actually happen is we'll all be in the dark room at the same time, all fumbling around, dropping our film on the floor. Um, I'm going to process some film as well because I've got two rolls that someone wants to pick up on one day. So I'm going to do my film exactly the same as you guys have been doing yours. Um, <clears throat> Once they're all loaded up, I will use my grubby little film development sink to process that film. Um, we'll get it washed and dried. There's a few things to check. One is that these little ball bearings are loose. Sometimes they get all gummed up, especially if you don't wash off. The last part of the process is a wash aid. So like, it's just washing up liquid, but it's not really nice washing up liquid. Uh, and it stops uh, drying marks and sort of stabilises the film. But um, it, if you don't wash it off the reels afterwards, they get a bit gunky and sticky. So you just have to make sure they're loose. Uh, I'll go through opening the canister in the dark room, but you take your film out and it's got this cut end on the outside, and then on the inside you've got the, the plastic core, that thing, on the inside. On most films, it's actually physically attached through a little hole in the middle. The best way I found to load film onto these things is in the dark. Just to take that and cut it at an angle like that. Oh, so you snip the whole thing off. <laughs> so you end up with a point, like slanted edges, 
that you can then thread into here. So we always go into the flat side of these two little triangles. You drag your film about halfway around. Okay. Let the film drape towards you. Put your thumbs over the entrance. This will all become apparent soon. And then you just shuffle it. I know you've all done this stuff. Like I say, if I can iron out a few creases by telling you every single step, then that's, that's great. I seem to get where you ratchet it so far on and then you get stuck and it doesn't seem to want to go any further. Yeah, so what that is, is um, if you cut it flat, it's these edges. They hit, like, I don't know what it is and I don't know why Patterson designed it this way, but there's, there's something about halfway through that it catches on, on all of these reels. I don't know what they put on. It doesn't matter if you've got a little bit hanging out, that's fine, okay. So we've got a waterproof lid, a lightproof lid, a core, and then a spiral. So that goes into there. What I'll usually do actually in the dark is that it sets out like this. Put that in there. And I'll just push it down to the bottom. If you're worried about it moving around, you can always put another empty one on top just to keep it down. But they're usually fine if you're not aggressive with it, and you should never be aggressive with agitation. Um, this lid is most people's stumbling point because it, it never really wants to go on flat. It has to go on flat and it's really loose. And then you turn it clockwise and it'll stop and then brute force and ignorance click it. Sometimes it takes a bit more brute force than others. Um, Popular and good to get. sometimes it will catch and pop out. When it does that, you'll be shuffling it and it'll, it'll literally just unpeel itself and fall on the floor. So not only does that stop that from happening, but it allows you to actually feel the film and what's going on with it. Don't, don't worry about getting your fingers on it. It doesn't matter. It's gonna be, it's gonna go through three chemicals and have a 10 minute wash. Okay, I did wonder if oh, yeah. I've never ever touched it before. Afterwards. Afterwards. Yeah, 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 totally, yeah, and, and that's that's good. You yeah, know, it's good to like it. be careful yeah, with it. But I've never really worried too much about it. The, the only time you've really got to be careful, and this comes into the like getting like good practice, is when we actually unfurl it. So what most people do, because it's so exciting, pulling the film out, and you go and start looking at everything and all you're doing is just catching dust yeah. with, with it. The best way to to avoid dust, it's a, like I, I think we could all safely say that this isn't a dust free environment. Yeah, it's a lab, okay? So the way I keep things dust free is that precise moment I'm really careful. And when I hang the film into there, you were talking about undoing the thing. So once it's processed, I'll take it out. Once it's had the rinse aid, whip some of the excess water off, pull this bit out, clip it, and then I'll undo that and let the whole thing drop and then put another clip on the bottom to weight it and then I'll close the door and walk away from it. I don't even look at it, I just get it into the, the dryer. And whilst we're on the subject scratches, always go with the curve of the film. So when you're loading it, always go the way it wants to go. The reason being is that it's emulsion in. If you went the other way, emulsion out, the chances of scratching it are way higher, especially when it's just come out of all of those chemicals and washes it super soft. It's really easy to just mark it. We'll label everyone's up. And not only am I gonna put our names and our film type on here, but I'll put um, the amount of liquid you need to put in it to cover the film. Okay.
Okay, so Richard, <coughs> we've got FP4. Two times FP4 and one uh, T Max 100. You need. <coughs> I generally use slightly more than what they tell you to. So you use 600 for medium format, 600 mil, and I use 300 mil to 35 mil in total. So with yours, you're going to need 1200 to cover everything. 1200 mil, and your time is 11 minutes without it. I'll go through all that in a minute. One thing that I find really strange is it doesn't tell you anything about the stop and fix times. You know, like on a massive dead shot? Yeah. That's one thing that's standard for everything. I, Okay, so a little bit of health and safety. I try and do everything in this sink. Um, so we try and avoid wandering around and getting chemicals everywhere. Um, all the chemicals that we use are no more harmful than any household cleaner. The worst of them is the fixer. Uh, what that can do is bleach your phone in. We try and standardise everything as much as we can. They've been, they've been working out the correct way and dilution and temperature to, to to process these films for years and years and years. The times I've given you are just the times that I know off the top of my head for this particular developer. There's loads of different types of developers. Some of it is like high acutance, high sharpness. Some of them give you smaller grains. Some of them are really good for pushing film and all that kind of stuff. However, ID11 is pretty much standard everywhere. So most labs use ID11. Medium contrast, fine grain, lasts for ages, um, comes as, a, as two powders, part A and B, and you mix them together in warm water. The developer is a uh, is an alkaline, and once we finish developing, we, we need to neutralise this, we pour away the developer, it's the only one we pour away, it's the only one we dilute. Once we've poured it away, we need to neutralise it. The stop bath is the stuff that neutralises, so, so it literally just stops development. That's its only job, really apart from saving the fixer. If you mix these two together, you get ammonia. So we want to avoid that at all costs. So like cross-contamination is a big thing in the dark room. When we're in there printing, you'll notice that each tray has a set of tongs and those tongs stay with that tray. So we don't swap them around. We try and avoid any cross-contamination if we can. Fixer is the thing that permanently fixes that silver halide um, in its development. And it, more importantly, makes it archivally permanent if you do it for five minutes. We're going to dilute this one to one, and it needs to be at 20 degrees C. If it's any hotter, the developer works quicker. If it's any cooler, it works slower. So you end up getting smaller grain and underdeveloped negatives if it's too cold, if it's too hot, the other way. and by agitate I mean do this. So always hold the top of the lid and I'll generally kind of twist as I'm doing it. So I twist the container around. Nice and gentle. So what we're doing, and this might alleviate an issue that you've had, when we twist 
what we're doing is pulling the developer around the spool and we're going up and down at the same time. We do this for the first full minute. After we've done the first minute, we put it down into the sink and give it a little tap and that should tap any air bubbles off it. Okay, so if everyone wants to pour their fixer in. Uh, yeah, I really miss screen printing. It's like, I love it as much as I do some print, printing. Yeah, I'm a massive t-shirt fan, so I was glad I saw how it, the process, and I've got a friend. What I'm gonna do is just stack that film together to get it washed. on the very end of it. That's what they do. So that you see how it's slightly foggy as well? Not that we're going to look at it too much once we hang it up, but that's your older film, so it's yeah. just got that fog into it. It'll be fine, though. So. And then all I'm going to do is crack it open. Perfectly processed with all the film. Yeah, I think it just depends. Um Very basic terms. The diffusion enlarger has a bulb pointing sideways usually. The bulb shines into a mixing box, which is generally a box lined with polystyrene, and it bounces the light around and then directs it through to your negative and then through the lens. We go shiny side to the glass, so the emulsion side. <laughs> yeah, there's a space difference on this. Yeah. yeah. We'll squeeze them all in there. Some frames are all right. Some yeah. And then we can select the ones we want to print. My enlarger has a slightly intimidating looking timer. <laughs> um, it does exactly the same as your guys does. It's only that we've got control over contrast with this timer as well. Instead of dialing it in on the head, I'm just dialing it here. That's pretty much it. So on this enlarger, you've got a focus. So there's a focus light here for the press. I'll turn it on and off. Okay. And we've got a timer in this section, so we've got individual seconds. And you can add tens of seconds, so we can go from 5 to 15, so on and so forth, up and down. And then you've got fractions of seconds, which believe it or not, I do sometimes use. And then to start the timer, it's just the space bar. And then to stop it, it's just the space bar. So that'll give us five seconds exposure. 
if we've got the focus light on, we can also turn that off with the space bar. It's like start and stop anything, yeah? For every time we open up our lens, so if we've got it, it's dullest and our time is 20 seconds. If I open it up by a stop, our time will be 10 seconds for the same equivalent exposure. It halves your exposure time to get the same result every time you open the lens up. It doesn't matter if you don't. Um, so, like I was saying before, our magenta boost contrast yellow reduces it. So at the moment we're on two, which is normal, normal grade, okay? So if I press this, white light more or less. If I put this up to five, it's pink. And then if we go to zero, it's yellow. They're like totally crucial to everything. And the main, one of the main reasons is it's gonna save you paper because if you don't get it right in a test strip, you do a print and it won't be right. My general path, and this isn't really for contact sheets, although there'll be a little bit of it, there's a bit of setup time. So we might do test strips now and they might all be wrong. We'll make some changes to our enlargers and the settings, usually the brightness, the aperture, and then we'll do it again. Fingers crossed we'll be in the right ballpark. When we're doing prints, you do your test strip, then we might make some changes, do another test strip, then you'll make a work print. And from that work print, we then decide how we want to creatively change our image. The next step will be then to make a master print. So we just make that like proper nice print. That has a shiny side and a not shiny side. Obviously this is photographic paper, so you can't get it in the light. You slide it into this plastic lip at the back. I'll usually try and cover a couple of negatives if I can. A couple of strips of negatives. So I've got the bottom half of one and the top half of another. First dark room tool, bit of card. And I use it for loads of stuff, like dodging and burning, creating shapes and things like that. And a bit of garden wire with some blue tack on the end. That's your dodge tool. Don't be fooled into buying expensive dodge tool sets because they're pointless. This is the best dodge you'll ever make. <laughs> uh, blue tack's great because not only is it malleable, it's heavy. So whilst you're dodging, it's hard to actually keep it still, which makes any uh, tonality, tonal changes completely transparent. We'll cover everything but one frame at the end. For you, I'm gonna do it in half frames because they're bigger. So cover the whole lot up, pop the heart, and give it a blast of five seconds. And we move it across, give it another one. So we're doing it in half frame steps for yours. So we work our way across in those steps and then the final one will be to give the whole thing on. So that should be steps of 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. You guys will get 30 on yours. You can split them in half if you want, but it gets a bit fiddly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mixed together, um, we've got developer, stop back, fixer. We develop for one minute, stop for 30 seconds, fix for five minutes. However, after our paper's been in the fixer for 30 seconds or a minute, we can pop the lights on or take it in a tray outside and have a look at it. Because you don't have to worry about the test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do it with a, with a proper print as well, as long as you put it back in again for the full five if you want to keep hold of it. And then we've got a wash at the end, so we just chuck it in there, turn the wash on and it will gently wash all of our prints. To put our paper into our developer tray, to so lift the tray up, you drop your paper in the dry end and then drop the tray. Pretty much in one move. Mm -hmm. so you drop and drop. Together. And then you just very gently agitate. People have a tendency to get really like, yeah, don't worry about it, just very gently do that. Here it comes. So that's what people when they put it in the tank to slip it in. Yeah. Like a dive kind of thing. Yeah, so you can. You probably would do with a bigger print and the little stuff is easier this way. Yeah. Also, you can get yourself in the right mess doing that. Sometimes it'll stick to the bottom of your book, book, book with your paper. Yeah. If you've got big paper, I tend to put it in face down and then flip it over, which is perfectly here. So I can already see, I'm going to adjust your enlarger a little bit. It all seems a bit light, so a bit of a note. 
seconds. Notice how I'm using different times for each tray. Let it drain a little. Next one. Makes it five minutes, although it works, so we'll turn the lights on after 30 seconds or so. It's okay, so I'll give you all the test strip. Yeah, Richard, that's the right way up. So it's still five seconds, yeah? Uh, yeah, still five seconds. I've just changed the brightness so it can be a little bit brighter than it was before. Let's see, that's one second. So, there you go. Does that lock in? Just the pattern's a bit nice. Yeah, way nice. Presuming you know this already, but I'm going to say it. Standard lens for a 35mm camera is 50mm. Standard lens for a 35mm negative is 50mm. Medium format is 80mm for a camera, so it's 80mm in here. So that I've got just put an 80mm in for this medium format. And then for a large format camera, it's 150 So I've got big 150 mil lenses as well. I usually just put it in loosely, so I've got a big band at the top, so we just pull that over. That's where we want it to be. And then we slot that in, pull it in, and then close it up. Jobs are good. So all we've got to do is focus but before we focus, we need to make sure that our easel is printing the size that we want to print. So this will prop our paper in. We're doing 10 by 8 prints. Um, but it's always nice to print with a white border. Like, <laughs> you were waiting for me to say that. Didn't you? <laughs> so, like, the, the tendency is to just get as much on your paper as possible. But actually, even with a small print, if you put a nice fat border on it, it turns it into a print. Do you know what I mean? Instead of it just being something you get from Jessup's, it's it's really nice. And then we just lift your easel up. Slide it into those stops. And away you go. So go for 30. Okay. is a normal or slightly punchy contrast range. And then Rob, yours was kind of normal, but you've got quite a complex image and to, to make it pop a little bit, that bit of contrast, just a touch, we've not put much in. We've not made this really high contrast print, but we've just made it pop a little bit. That's really nice. I'm sure I didn't know what time I'm putting it. <laughs> Don't worry, it'll be fine. And then with yours, we've got these Slight, the ever so slightly overexposed, just a touch, perhaps a stop. And because of that, they're a bit more contrasting. So we've not had to worry so much about con contrast control with yours. It's just getting the exposure right. And then we've done a pre exposure just to pull in these whites. If we hadn't have done it, that window would have been blown out. So we've pulled it right back. That's good. Good job to come to you, and they know what you're doing. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool, though, isn't it? It's all right, isn't it? But once you get there, yeah. I mean, honestly, just wait till you turn the light on. Two very nice prints there. So, like I said before, Richard, these highlights on the window yep. would have basically bled into the border. They'd be the same paper white. Paper white doesn't really exist. 
just like you know whiter than white, and they you know when you do a digital image and you get clipping. Yeah. It's not it's not a thing. So the only time you ever really see it is in, in light bulbs and the sun. Yeah. So there should never ever be bleed from white into your board, and it should always be tone there. These changes should be very subtle. You can see it there, can't see. It's in the place. around there. Yeah, across here. Not bad. So just subtle changes. Um, so thank you all for today. It's been really fun. Thank you. Um, if you use social media of any sort, please do like share what we do and know some of you already do if you fancy taking the time to give us like a rating on facebook or all that kind of stuff that'd be amazing thank you it's been good that's been good yeah thank you very much it's, it's yeah. uh, right yeah congratulations everyone <laughs> 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 <laughs>